Welcome to episode zero of TJU on air. So here we go. I'm going to answer all of your guys' most common questions today and just settle in a little bit and explain how I got to where I am, where I intend to go, and what this show is going to be all about. This is going to be something really cool that we get to build together moving forward, where I, I really, it, it boils down to the best way to update you guys as to what's going on in other people's lives that I've worked with, what happens on the other side of the camera, what is going through people's heads when we're doing this type of stuff. I'm doing things that a lot of nonprofits, a lot of agencies, and a lot of other people have already done, but I'm doing it different with a camera. How does that work for both parties involved? What are what is what's going through everybody's head when Somebody like me with a camera on their chest approaches them and asks them if they can what what they can do for them. What would they do if they had a couple hundred dollars right now? What steps would it take for you to not be homeless anymore? And are you ready to do that? Is that something you want to go for? Is that something you want to do? I got into this with a goal, crazy crazy goal. I wanted to Get 100 people off the streets. 100 people from homeless to housed. And I still might hit that goal, but it's going to take a lot longer than I originally anticipated. I'm looking for people that are only a few steps away from overcoming homelessness. They only need a few things to come back inside. Those are really the people I'm looking for. Moving forward into 2024, I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on that. The biggest hang-up for me so far has been letting go when people don't pull their end. Where do I stop? How do I let go and let them go back outside? That That's hard. I don't think anyone understands, but it is not easy whatsoever. It, it, it You become invested in people. You care about people. You want the best for them. But they're not always ready for it. And you have to be okay with stepping away when it doesn't work. That's, that's what I, I'm giving myself my own advice right now. But I hope that it helps you as well. Because that's really what it boils down to. is How do I let go when somebody isn't doing everything they need to do? And how do I know when to pull the plug and offer this to someone else? I've been learning. We're two years in now. Almost. And I, I really... I have a better idea of how to attack this. I'm always going to be learning, always going to be improving, and always pivoting and making changes. Every case is different. I want to be able to be unique and help each person individually with their needs, not this blanket that's out there, the, the blanket of, of checkboxes that, hey, you fit this, you fit that. So... You will work with this, but oh, you don't check that box. You don't get this help. So I want to build something bigger to help more people. How did I get started doing this? I'm going to go back as far as I possibly can with this, okay? Because I think it's important. And, and I think that you guys will relate to this one way or another. When I was young, I always saw homeless people all over the place. I rode my bike all over all over the neighborhood. I always had a big group of friends. We went, we rode bike jumps in fields in places where there could possibly be homeless people. We never really had any negative interactions. For the most part, you know, we would just let them mind their business while we minded ours and we rode our bikes and had a good time. Um, but I always noticed them. I always wondered what got them to that point or how they went through each day when you're a kid i will say camping outside and being on your own 24 7 sounds a lot cooler than it actually is so i didn't i almost looked at them like they had a sense of freedom that i envied as a kid i, I wonder if anyone else has shared that you know if they remember being young and having those kind of thoughts i know i did sometimes but let's fast forward a bit to when, after I had my run and did everything dumb under the sun, you could imagine, and uh, partied really hard. 
I came back to life and wanted to get my life together, wanted to change who I hung around, what I did on a daily basis. I wanted to get back into riding BMX, something that was very, very good for me when I was young and kept me out of the wrong type of trouble. I still got in plenty of trouble riding bikes. You're not allowed to do that in a lot of places. At the time, you weren't even allowed to ride a bike in a skate park, so I had lots of skate park tickets. Anyway, fast forward, I'm about 25 years old, I think, and I uh, got back into BMX, and I went back into the, the hills where we had some jumps um, when I was a kid, and I was by myself, and I didn't have a helmet on. I thought, you know, I would get do some of the things I used to be able to do and do a 360 over this, this jump that... Didn't it wasn't honestly that big of a jump? Uh, it seemed like it wouldn't be that big of a deal. In previous years, it would not have been. However, I'm just getting my health back. I'm just getting back on my feet after being very stupid in my early twenties. Uh, so I go to do this jump, and in my mind, I'm telling myself, "You don't have a helmet. If it doesn't feel right, just bail." Just jump off the bike in the middle of the air and land on your feet. You'll be fine. I've done this plenty of times when I was younger. I was more concerned with not having a helmet and falling and hitting my head with no one else around than I was concerned about how the jump and the trick was going to go. So I wasn't there in the right state of mind. And I should have known right then and there that it wouldn't be a good idea to try to pull this trick. It's very important that you let go of everything and you focus on solely that that thing at that moment in time and you feel right. If you don't feel right, you have to try again. You have to stop. I didn't. I just said, I'll bail. So I went to do the 360 over this jump, got 270 degrees, bailed, jumped off the bike, didn't feel right. I probably had it but I didn't have the confidence to land it. But I landed 90 degrees turned sideways, so so I'm 270 degrees. I didn't make a full 360. I wasn't straight. And I was I landed on my feet. Um, the ground was very, very hard, and my ankle breaks like it sounds just like a tree branch breaking, like, like bones breaking in the movies. It's, it's every bit of everything you've ever heard. It sounded exactly like that. Nobody was around as far as I knew. I screamed. I yelled. I was in a lot of pain, but more shock than anything, and also frustration because I had been sober now for over a month. Uh, I, and I wanted more than anything to get my life back on track. I had started some new projects with some friends, and things were going in a good direction. All of this was going to come crumbling down now because I wasn't able to walk. All of these thoughts are going through my head in seconds. And I am so mad. I am pissed. Some guy, a homeless guy, living in a bush up there in the hills, hears me. I did not know he was there. He comes out with this makeshift crutch that he has because he himself has trouble walking. I don't really know why. I didn't have enough time to find out or ask questions. I was in a lot of pain. He gave me this crutch. He helped me up off the ground. Helped me back on my feet. I never will forget that. Although I didn't think that that played into what I do today as much until recently. I had kind of forgotten about it. Kind of. It was in the back of my mind. I didn't relate it to this. He tried to help me walk, and I couldn't walk. I couldn't do it. I ended up getting back on my bike and going downhill with the one working leg I had scooting my bike and my broken ankle on the other pedal. And I rolled downhill until I was able to get some service, called my dad to come and pick me up. I'm not going to get into all the details of recovery, I will say that I was in traction in the hospital for five weeks with 25 pounds of sandbags hanging from my heel bone to slowly pull it back to where it needed to be. It was a very, very bad break. I never forgot about that homeless man that helped me at that moment in time that literally helped me get back on my feet. 
years go on. And and there was a moment in time that I actually did not help anybody. I, I didn't take the time to help homeless people. I didn't I never have given money out to people asking for money, holding signs. I just don't I don't see handing out money as being something that's really beneficial in the long term. I grew up in the LA area, so I was so focused on myself surviving. My family's had two bankruptcies. Um, we've had lots of ups and downs. Uh, and I've always just been concerned with myself and how I can make money, how I can survive, how I can be successful. How can I afford to raise a family in the future? How can I own my own home? These kind of things. And, and I never could think past myself living in that area. And it wasn't until I moved to Reno for a job in the cannabis industry that completely fell through. The owner and I just didn't see eye to eye. He laid me off. I had just moved here. I signed a lease on the home that at the time was kind of my dream home. I had a great job. I was almost making six figures right underneath it. He lays me off. I, I, I've only been in this home for about a month. I have just gotten caught up on every debt I had before I moved here. I didn't have extra money. I did not have a savings. He gave me what I made in two weeks as a severance. That check was enough for me to focus and move forward. And I didn't know what else to do at the time. I didn't have the best car for it, but I signed up for every delivery app possible. I would have done Uber Rideshare or something like that, but I had a dent on my car. And, and so I couldn't get approved for it. But I could get approved to deliver food. So I did. This is all happening. And at one moment, I'm, I'm, I'm depressed. I, 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 I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm really going to chase this here in Reno or if I'm going to give up, put my tail between my legs and go home, back home and ask my family for help. I didn't know what to do. I did not want to give up. I love this town. I truly found a home where I, I felt I could be myself. I had totally, at, at this point, I saw a guy at the end of the freeway holding a sign. You know, and I, I just had the thought. It's like, man, I wonder that guy's story. I wonder how he got in the position he's in. If I'm not careful right now, I could be in his position. If I didn't have anyone to call, I definitely would be. But I have a license. I have a car. I have a home. I just need to hold it all together and make sure I don't lose it. So I'm not in his shoes. But I wonder what got him to that point. And I wonder if other people have had the same thought. As I was driving, I wonder if I could do something with that. I wonder if I could share people's stories. I wonder if people would be interested in something like that. Kind of put that on the back burner. Decided to uh, focus on myself and get back on my feet. I did Uber Eats and DoorDash and Postmates and Grubhub. I rotated between them all, depending on which one was the most profitable, and I would work six days, sometimes seven in a week. I would make around $900 before taxes, and I grinded and grinded and grinded. Nobody would respect the experience that I had, even though I was a supervisor and a manager at multiple places that were involved in the cannabis industry. Nobody respected that experience because of the industry it was in. So I had to start from the ground up if I wanted to get out of that industry. And I was done. I was tired. I wanted to move on. I decided to be able to pass any test that came my way so I could get any job opportunity that was available. Uh, and so I applied. Well, I went to a temp agency and I got into a place, Vistaprint, as a temp. I worked there and I did it best I could. I worked very hard, got hired on, worked my way up from the bottom not to the top, but to a good position where I, I was making pretty good money, about $30 an hour. And I, and I enjoyed the job. I did. And I had more surgeries on my ankle to help improve it, fix it. But that thought of that person standing there holding a sign had, had never gone out of my head. And, and, and I'd been watching other channels, Invisible People. I'd been watching what Mark does, and I thought it was awesome. 
and I loved it. And I was wondering if I could do something like that myself. And then 2020, and I, I knew that a lot more people were going to be facing hard times than we'd ever seen before. It was going to get bad. And I wondered if this would be a good time for me to get started, chase what I wanted to do. But, but the problem is I want to help people. I want to do more than just interview them. How do I do that? I saw people like Jimmy Darts and, um, of course, Mr. Beast, um, MD Motivator, uh, and actually Charlie Rocket. And, and, I, and I started watching the shorter videos under a minute where they're just going there and all you, it's like a highlight reel, but you're going in and you're, you're turning someone's day completely around. You're completely fixing that, that problem that they're facing at that moment in time and changing their life. They all do it very different. But I thought maybe there's a way I could do something like that, my own way, but also share people's stories. Maybe I can really help people. Maybe I can really make a difference. And my ankle had been getting worse and worse at that current job at, at Vistaprint, walking around on concrete in a warehouse. It had been getting really bad. And I decided that, you know, how do I get this started? Where am I going to find the funding? How do I do this? I had money saved. Uh, my girlfriend and I had both been saving money. We both had 401ks. We both had stuff set aside. But I never wanted to be in a tough position again, and I didn't want to touch any of that. My goal was to start with something from nothing. I wanted to sell one of my cars. I have a, a Subaru WRX. I, I still have it. And it's like been a project car and it runs. It's fine. Whatever. I thought I could sell it at the time. I probably could have sold it for a lot more than I could today. Um, and use that money to start going and helping help people. But then I thought, wait a minute. This is the idea. This is what really changed it all. This is what made it all happen. And I love it still to this day. I think it's amazing because anyone can do this. I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to get a different job. I'm going to find something that isn't, you know, as physical, even if I make less money. And I'm going to go out one day a week and I'm going to help people. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to fund it. So I'm going to go and do Uber Eats, which at, in my experience has been the most profitable out of all the delivery services. I'm going to do Uber Eats, I'm going to take whatever I make for a day, and then I'm going to go help people with that. I'll maybe I'll be able to go out for a couple hours, and then maybe go help people for a couple hours. I don't really know exactly how it's going to work, but I'm going to just go for it and see what I can do. I didn't make as much money as I used to doing that. The The pay had gone down significantly from when I started, and I, I got back on my feet. But it still was enough. It still would work. The first video, the first time that I filmed myself in an interaction, I had kind of practiced without a camera and just gone out and talked to people. Um, and, and I've always been a talkative person. I've always had this personality where I enjoy talking to people. My dad raised me that way. No matter who it is, I have no problem talking with someone and having a conversation, even if we don't share the same opinions. I love to hear people out. There might be something I can learn from them. Even if I don't think they're a good person or they're in a bad spot in their life, I still feel there's value that can be gained from sharing a conversation. I've always felt that way. I don't have a problem approaching people and talking to them. When I left that job at Vistaprint, the person in HR at that moment in time sent me an email and, and reminded me that, you know, I have a gift with people and it is a gift and it is special. And I always kind of knew that. I didn't take it serious. I didn't, I don't toot my own horn. But that reminded me that what I want to do is going to work. I am fit for this. This is perfect. Going and talking to people and helping them and sharing our conversation and just recording it and sharing it with the world, for me, is natural. It, the, the unnatural thing is having a camera there. Everything else is just me being me. So this is going to be easy. So I took this driving job. The hours were a little bit more flexible. I had more time to focus on this project that I wanted to start. And I had figured out, you know, what I'm what I'm going to do. I didn't exactly know what I was going to call it. Um, I kind of, I said, you know what, maybe it'll, it's just going to be me. I just want to be myself. So, and I'm Nate. So uh, I tried to set it up as Nate with nothing else, but that was taken. It wouldn't work. So I said, well, 
If only it could just be Nate. Oh, there it is. Just Nate. You know, I'm probably going to have a funny interaction at one point. Somebody's going to call me something, uh, a saint or, or uh, something that, that I, you know, is I'm not. I'm just myself, and that's all I need to be. And this first interaction I had with someone after working for two and a half hours and making $16, this guy asked me if I'm God. Um, this was the first time I'd ever filmed anything. And, and I just turned to him and I said, no, I'm just Nate. At that moment in time, more than ever, I knew that this was the path. This is where I need to be, and this is what I meant to do. And it was awesome. The moment I shared with him, uh, we, we talked for almost an hour. Of course, I only make like a one-minute video out of this interaction, but we talked for a long time. And then I said, this is going to work. And, and so I did that for about a week. Um, and then I saved up enough uh, enough content to be a week ahead. I started posting it. It got some traction. I remember the first time I was at work and I was on break and I'm watching my video and it gets like 10,000 views. And I'm so excited. I'm blown away. I just knew that it would work. I knew that it was possible. I knew that, that I was doing the right thing. I, I just kept doing it. And it got more views. And, and all on TikTok at this moment in time. I tried it on other platforms, but TikTok just grew faster than anything else. And after about a month or so of doing this, I put my Cash App, my PayPal, my... At the time, I think I just had a Cash App and a PayPal. I don't think I had a Venmo. And I put that in my profile, in my bio, like everybody else does. I, all these other creators do that. I thought, well, I'll just put it there. Who knows what's going to happen? People started sending me money. And then it, it it's like, whoa, I... You know, a couple weeks go by and I'm getting more and more. And I'm always getting very close to exactly what I need for whatever someone's requesting. It was weird. But it was so cool. And something told me, as long as I do this, as long as I keep doing it, I will always have whatever I need to keep doing it. So I just had faith in the process. I, I kept doing it. And more would come, and I was able to do more. Uh, it, it was really, really crazy. I didn't expect it to happen like this. But I was able to make a change in people's lives, build relationships with people, and there was a lot of negativity in the beginning. So much so I lost sleep. I, I didn't know if I was doing the right thing. I thought about deleting my account and completely just, just giving up on it multiple times because of all the negativity that I got. But I reminded myself that the people I'm interacting with, they know what's going on. They see the camera I have. They don't have a problem with this. At this moment in time, I hadn't been telling everyone my entire intent with the video or with filming it. I didn't think it mattered because I have a camera on my chest and I saw so many other people online doing it. just thought it was kind of normal. But it didn't feel right. So I decided to kind of explain to everyone what I do and, and what the intent is with this camera and, and what I how I'm able to even fund this and how it works. And if they say no and they don't want any part of it, that's fine. I'll do my best to help them as much as I can and find someone who is and just keep trying and keep trying. To my surprise, though, I went back to almost... Honestly, probably every single person that was in my videos within that first month and explained to them what I was really doing, maybe showed them the video, maybe they had already seen it, um, and everybody was okay with it. Everybody thought it was cool. And I, even more confirming for me at this moment that I am doing the right thing, that I don't need to listen to haters and people who don't understand because they're not in these interactions. They're not part of this. They're watching from the outside and throwing out negativity. And there's always going to be people doing that, and I can't let it bother me. So as long as everyone involved understands and is cool with it, I don't see anything wrong. So I kept going. I kept doing it. And got more and more support. And more people kept contributing. And I was able to do more and more. It got to a point after months of I can pull back from work now 
a little bit uh, or I have no choice because I I feel an obligation when people contribute to make sure that that goes to to good use and and that I have something to show for it and that in itself it's just weird and and I'm still kind of like not a hundred percent okay with it but I am it it there's times where I feel like people donate and they have an expectation and I feel like I owe people when they even though it's a donation I feel like people are paying for something and I have to produce sometimes there's a lot of pressure with that I know that like as an example, there was a couple I was working with at the time and someone sent enough money for them to get a hotel room because I was able to help them, but I couldn't afford that. I didn't even know how to go about it. Um, luckily, I finally find them. This money's been sitting aside. I've been trying so hard to find them so that I can spend this for this room because someone donated for specifically that. I don't know what to do with it if I can't find them. I mean, I guess I can refund this person. But I would much rather find them and get them a room. So eventually I did. Eventually I was able to get them a hotel room. I'm able to pull back from my work schedule sl slightly, slowly. I'm not making any money from ad revenue at this point, And I'm not paying myself from donations. I'm paying my bills from my job. And I only have to... My, my overhead is low. I've always kind of kept it low ever since that first initial um, layoff when I moved here. I... I, I gotten much smarter with how I spend my money um, so I was able to work three days a week and focus on helping people three to four and it was going really really well and it just kept getting better and better and then I started actually making money from my videos I got approved for the programs um, and I, I wasn't a lot but it was something it, it was it was a little bit it was like wow okay now I can pay a bill with this I can pull back from work a little bit more. And as time went on, I made more money from ad revenue. And that, that was how I paid my bills. And donations and contributions, everything went straight to helping people. Anything from Amazon wish list, um, any funds we raise, it always goes to just helping people. Uh, and I pay my bills with the ad revenue, which has a lot of ups and downs. And it's not as good as some people think. Some months are really, really good. Some months are really, really bad. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm able to start pulling back from work. And then after a while, I, I quit my job. And I went full time doing this. And it was so scary because now I'm counting on ad revenue from apps that could decide tomorrow that they don't want to pay you anymore. You could get banned. You could get you know, the, the program could end and you don't, I don't have any more money. So I'd have to go back to a regular job, which if I have to do, I still would. Um, but things are going okay. I'm able to pay my bills. People contribute enough so I can keep helping people the way I do. That's what matters most. I always get a question. How do I help people in my neighborhood? What can I do to help people? And it really is as simple as, Taking the time to have a conversation with someone and ask them how they are doing directly. Get into it. Ask questions and listen to the answers. Even if they don't make total sense to you, listen. Hear people out. And then maybe out of that conversation, you can gather something that's in your wheelhouse that you can provide. Something that you can afford to do something you can take the time to do, whatever it may be. But I guarantee you just the conversation alone is more valuable than you will ever understand to someone facing tough times, living outside, someone who's homeless, whatever it may be. People overlook people that are facing hard times all the time, way too often. And if you take the time to actually engage with them, let them be seen and heard. That's more valuable than anything else. But maybe instead of getting a 10 or $20 cheeseburger, you could get a $5 one and get two and go hand one to someone else if they're hungry. Maybe you have some old blankets that you don't really need. You can go hand out some blankets. 
Um, maybe, you know, it's easiest for you to help me do what I do in whatever way possible. And that way you can sit at home, you can go work your, your job, you can do what you need to do and focus on you and know that I'll be out there helping people because of you and the help that you've given. We're working together here. It's, it's a team. Team just us. So keep all that in mind. The easiest way to go help out in your own neighborhood is just to start small with a conversation. And remember that I started on just 16 bucks and buying someone some pizza, and then I spent another 10 out of my own pocket and got them a, a phone charger. Uh, so it was $26 and about an hour of time. And it made a difference. It definitely made a difference for me. I still have yet to find that person. He didn't have shoes that first day I met him. I didn't think I could afford to buy him shoes. But after I saved up a little bit more, I hunted for him for weeks, trying to find him so I could buy him a pair of shoes. And I still to this day have never found him. Um, and if I did, I totally would buy him some shoes or whatever else he may need. So keep that in mind. You can start small. It doesn't take a lot. Find whatever works for you and do it. That's it. The biggest thing is jumping off and just doing it. Next time you walk by somebody who seems like they could use an extra taco, burrito, or whatever it is, if you're on your way, I cannot tell you how many times I've been on my way to walk into a restaurant, seen somebody there who's starving, who's asking for food, and has not gotten any all day, even though they're in front of a restaurant and hundreds of people have passed by them. It is unbelievable how often this happens. And I was guilty of this when I was younger, 100%. I was too focused on me. I wasn't concerned about anybody else. But I don't think that our world will get any better if we don't take the time to work together and be there for each other. And just talk and engage and listen. I think that that's very important. And that's what I love doing. But there are times where life itself can feel so heavy, overwhelming, that you can't get out of your own shell and your own head. Uh, but I think it's very important to take a moment to do that. Because it can really change your outlook at that moment in time and, and possibly steer you in a better direction. It's good to do. It really is. I think we need to talk to our fellow human beings a lot more than we do now. I mean, right now I'm talking to a camera, but I'm imagining you on the other side of it. And I hope that this is heard and you understand what I'm saying. It's important we talk to each other. It's important we do more than just text or even phone calls. Take the time to actually ask people in person how they are doing. Not just people that are struggling, because almost everybody has a struggle of their own that they will not tell you about. We all are going through something. So that's a long answer, right? But that's, in a nutshell, how I've gotten to where I'm at today. And something you could do to help more people in your neighborhood. As time goes on, I might build systems and things where people can maybe get some of the, the, the buy one, give one pairs, the give ones. Maybe I can donate those to other people so they can go help people in their neighborhood. Um, maybe I can take those to shelters. Maybe I can take them to um, groups of camps in other states where they need the help. All that's going to grow. And, and the buy one, give one program for my socks and my hats um, currently, blankets soon, uh, hoodies soon, shirts soon, all of the most requested items that are very necessary for people outside that we all use every day are things that I can sell under the buy one, give one model and hopefully help a lot more people and help people get back on their feet. Maybe give them that job opportunity that nobody else is willing to give them. And if you have a job opportunity that you could offer somebody in a tough spot, I say give it a shot. If you have nothing to lose, give it a shot. It, it, you'd be amazed how many people that are really in need, that really want to work, can't. Because they don't have an ID, they don't have an address, they can't shower. 
a long list of those things. But maybe you can help them with a couple. Maybe you can overlook some. And maybe you can give them a chance. Maybe you can help them get their ID. Maybe you can help them get prepared for that job opportunity. Those are the most essential things that everybody's not doing. That is very, very important. Uh, try. See what you can do. I am going to answer a couple questions here. Um, one is from TikTok. And this one is from Mandaloria Mama. Um, what do I do for work? And do I work outside of content creation? And how did I get started doing this? I pretty much just answered all of that. Um, but I'm going to try to give it in a real quick, quick, quick answer. Maybe this is something that will be a little bit easier to uh, digest. Um, for work, I do this full time. Six, sometimes seven days a week. Honestly, probably seven. Uh, I make my money and pay my bills from ad revenue. And donations go to helping other people. I enjoy every day of this. And there are very hard days. I do well enough. I get by. And I'm able to keep doing what I do. And that is the most important thing no matter what happens. Socks and hats and all the other stuff I'm starting to sell. That's going to be a way for me to make a little bit more for myself and help more people give people jobs and build a business that can really help people get back on their feet that are only one or two steps away from getting back inside. That is needed more than anything. No matter how many jobs there are that out there, there aren't enough that are giving people an opportunity. I see it all the time. So, um, yes, I do do this full time. And I got started doing this with just an idea and taking whatever I made from food delivery to go and help other people with. And it started out with $20 about for a budget. I never mentioned my budget. I never told anybody what I had to spend. But almost every time their request was very close to what I had to spend within about five bucks. And it just worked. I went with it, and here I am today. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I forget myself, and I don't give myself enough credit because I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. I want to help a lot more people, but I, I have done a lot, and I, I need to give myself a little credit for that. It's easy to forget about the past and only look forward. And I do that a lot. Um, let's get into the next one. This one is from Facebook. This is from Jennifer Di Stefano. Um, what motivated me to help? What motivated me to help was really just knowing that, that there's going to be a lot more people that are facing hard times and that truthfully, we are all the same. We are all just human beings with the same needs and we could really help each other a lot more than sitting around and waiting for an agency to come in with some program and fix our lives. There are things we could do with each other to benefit everybody as a whole and help more people. And I want to do that and share that and remind people it's possible. It can be done. And uh, not only that, this is how I do it. Maybe you can do something similar. You don't need to film everything you do. In fact, it's a lot harder to film it and edit videos than it is just to go out and help people without doing it. So if you can afford to or you have the time to, I definitely recommend to just throw the camera aside or not even get one, whatever. Do what you can without one for a while or as long as possible. I enjoy those moments so much. Uh, I wear a camera almost all the time, but I don't feel like it's there. And editing videos is not easy. I put my heart and soul into that, and it takes a lot of time and effort. So, yeah, focus on just helping people however you possibly can. So that, what do you, what can you recommend for us to get involved in our hometowns or our homeless communities? Um, be safe. Be smart. Uh, don't do anything that you feel in danger by doing. But take the time to talk to people. Don't go in and approach a homeless camp 
um, by yourself. It's easier to find people that are maybe holding a sign or maybe sitting out front somewhere. If somebody is um, panhandling or asking for things, they're much easier to approach than somebody who is sleeping in their home or possibly doing something that they shouldn't really be doing uh, while you approach them. You know, So be very, very careful. But at the same time, um, just talk to some people. Listen. And then just give them whatever they're asking for if you can afford it, if you have, if you have the time. It's really not that hard. The hard part for a lot of people is engaging and talking with another person. That's what we all got to break and we got to do more of. Practice with whoever you run into throughout the day. And not don't just ask them, hey, how's it going? Ask them, how is your day? And engage. Let's see. Um, Linda... Oh, man, I'm going to mess this name up. I'm going to try. Linda Goring Sibaka? I don't know. Linda Goring, let's just say that. What made you decide to help all these people? When did you start doing this? I wish it was something I could do. Being a woman uh, being a woman with severe arthritis, it's probably not very safe or practical to me. Keep up the great work. Thank you for saying that, Linda. And I've pretty much already answered that, but I want to touch on something. I see a lot of times where women say that they would love to do what I do, but they feel unsafe and they are scared to go and do it. And that's where I said, you know, sit in your car and if somebody's out there and you, you, you can speak with them, they're only six, eight feet away from me, whatever, ask them what you can do for them. Ask them if you can go for the, through the drive through for them and get them whatever you can afford. You can hit up the dollar menu or whatever it is nowadays. Is, I think it's over a dollar, but still the budget menu, whatever it is, and get people something to eat. Maybe you have an extra blanket lying around. Maybe you have some socks lying around. Maybe you could go buy some socks and keep them in your car, whether you get them from me or you get them from the store. It doesn't matter, but just keep something around to give to somebody. You don't have to hand out cash. I, I don't recommend you do that. I do recommend, however, though, that you ask people what they need and what you could do for them at times. But even as a woman, be careful, be safe, but give it a shot. Always. Just talk to people. Again, as long as you feel safe doing it, do it. Whatever you need to feel safe, do it. Oh, this is a good one. Jordy O'Lordy. Jordy Lordy. Jordy Lordy. This is from Instagram. Um, question is, have I ever had dangerous encounters when... And approaching homeless people with a camera and how did I handle it and what was the final outcome? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question because, yes, I have. I One time I approached a group of people and they ripped the camera off my chest and threw it. When I walked into their camp, they were using things that are illegal. And and I, I was tried to play safe. I tried to wave at them and let them know that I'm there. However, later I found that they had actually had a negative encounter. They, they'd stolen things from another homeless person that I had been working with. And I had been asking about this person. So I think that that set the tone right then and there that they wanted nothing to do with me, no matter what. Um, that went bad. I've reproached many people that are using illegal substances. And um, that's where you got to be really, really careful. And again, why I say don't approach camps. Uh, it can be very unsafe. Um, but the outcome has always been good. I am patient. I respect people's boundaries. And I don't judge them because of whatever they're using or doing at that point in time. I've done bad things myself. I get it. It's okay. If you're ready to move on from that, I'm down to help you out. If you're not, no one, I don't care what you're doing, should freeze or starve. I don't care. That, that I don't think anyone deserves that, no matter what. Um, so, yeah, I've had a couple dangerous encounters. But the thing that's beautiful is my camera in itself has kind of been a safety net for me because it records the whole interaction. It records everything going on. And if somebody were to do something, I would have it on, on camera. 
Um, so there's a little bit of protection there for me. I've been told by other homeless people that know what I do that I should never get rid of my camera because it's what saves me and protects me. And I know it's not perfect. I'm not saying that, again, if somebody could rip it off and get rid of it, whatever. But it, it's another thing that helps. I don't want to carry any sort of weapon around on me. Um, I don't just... You know, I, I want to approach people and, and uh, build a relationship and some trust with them. Uh, and if it feels unsafe, I'm going to get the heck out. But I haven't had any very unsafe encounters. I've had some hostile encounters, some people that aren't all there, um, are struggling with some mental illness. And I, I'm very careful about how I approach the situation. And, um, and yeah, I, I just change what's gonna, what I'm doing right then and there and adapt, you know, for my own safety. Um, but overall, I haven't really had an extremely dangerous encounter. It could happen. Um, I'm going to stay on my toes the best I can. But overall, it's been pretty good. What can you expect to see on this podcast? Well, even in this episode here or anything that is taken from this, please comment below questions that you have for people that have faced homelessness or other influencers like myself, that help other people. I'm going to interview, I've already interviewed the good boss. That was awesome. Um, I will be interviewing some more down the road. So if there's questions you have for them, cool. Uh, drop them in the comments below. Let's see what we can put together. Let's, I, I'd love to answer at least three of your guys' questions in every episode. Uh, there's some I've already recorded, so we won't get those, but that's okay. What you guys can expect to see here on TJU On Air is just me having a good conversation with somebody who's been through some hard stuff and we get to see the other side of it. And I, one of my favorite things is what was going through their head when I approached them. You know, how have the videos I've made affected their life? Was it positive? Was it negative? What came from it? I also would like to interview people that have been on other people's channels that do things like me and hear their side of the story. I can't thank you guys enough for being so supportive of all of this. The microphones, uh, a lot of this equipment was purchased from my Amazon wish list. I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to see this and I've been way behind on getting it out there. But here we go. The launch, 2024, January 1st. So much that goes on. Aside from that one minute or two minute video you see, there's a lot more in the background and I want to share that. Uh, I think it's important for everyone to understand what guys like myself go through and um, how hard it really is at times. For me, where I want to go 2024 and my goals is to help more people get back on their feet, focus more on longer videos, uh, and do more. I might not be able to put out as many videos, but I will be able to do more in each one. And I think that that is more important in the long run. Because I really do want to help people get back on their feet. Focusing on all of the TJU products, the hats, the socks, the blankets, the hoodies, the shirts, and more to come. Uh, as that will help me build something where I can help more people help them get back on their feet. I would love it if the company at some point, I know it's kind of a, a dream right now, um, but what I foresee us being able to offer people are showers, lockers, um, assistance to get I, IDs or, or whatever documents they need to be able to work, and a job offering as soon as they have that, an address to use to mail it to if they need it, whatever. This company will be able to help people with the things they need if they're willing to work they want to get back on their feet we have the tools you need to do that i'm building a company more around helping others than i am profits i know that's not the best idea when it from a business standpoint um but it's what i want to do and i don't care as long as we can make enough money to keep doing it we're gonna keep doing it that's the goal thank you guys so much for hanging out more episodes to come i can't wait to see you next time